Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I came to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of the letter shall pass from the Torah until all is accomplished. Whoever then annuls, annuls one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them, he shall be For I say to you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that the ancients were told, you shall not commit murder, and whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother or sister shall be guilty before the court, and whoever says to another, you good for nothing, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court, and whoever says, you fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fires of Gehenna. Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and present your offering. Make friends quickly with your opponent at law while you are with him on the, on the way, so that your opponent may not hand you over to the judge and the judge to the officer. And truly I say to you, you will not come out of there until you have paid the very last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If you're right, I make you stumble. Tear it out and throw it from you, for it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into Gehenna. Likewise, if your right hand makes you stumble, cut it off and throw it away, for it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into Gehenna. It was said, Whoever sends his wife away, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except for the reason of infidelity, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that the ancients are told, you shall not make false vows, but shall fulfill your vows to the Lord. all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you make an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything beyond these is of the evil one. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. us. We are his present day disciples. 
And we come to what seem to be some very hard scriptural passages. They are not for wimps. They are not for people who have just been introduced to the faith. They're for mature disciples. And so at that level, I speak with you today. Jesus says that there will not be one bit of law that passes away, but we are called upon to exceed the scribes and the Pharisees' righteousness. They have a certain righteousness, but Jesus tells us it was not enough. On one level, Jesus puts us in a bind. We're, be asked, we're being asked to do something that we all know full well that we are not capable of doing if we're at all honest with ourselves. We cannot succeed in our own effort. We are left to seek strength outside ourselves. And it's not as simple as it might seem from Ben Sarah's advice in our first reading. You will already have the Ten Commandments, and they're pretty terse and straightforward. Do this, don't do that. And not a lot of explanation about it either. We get to Ben Sarah, who is only a couple hundred years before the Common Era, before Christ, and he says something that's very important. He says, if you choose, you can keep the commandments. If you choose. But realistically, we experience limits in our free will, especially given our human nature which is prone to mistakes. There isn't enough willpower in the world to always choose the good. But even back in the Hebrew Bible, this was recognized. In Deuteronomy it says, I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Choose life choose life. Now, Deuteronomy has a little more to say about that. The process is not just our own gritting the teeth and willpower. It's not enough. Deuteronomy says, choose life by loving the Lord your God, heeding His, holding fast to Him. So in our says we can't mature and choose wisdom without first coming to the understanding of the cross. And in the Corinthians history, some of them wanted to skip that part. Uh, they pictured themselves as more capable of true wisdom than they were. And we know that through Christ, and the Holy Spirit, we can receive wisdom, but as Sarat says, we still have to choose it. We do have to choose it. So we come to understand Christ's suffering on earth resulted from his choices to follow his calling as the Messiah. And he knew what the end would be and we will not understand his wisdom till we understand the choice that he made. And we can have a lot of fancy theological constructs such as atonement, and there may be glimmers of truth in them, but until we come into what is involved in seeking the mind of Christ, what was he thinking when he, without flinching, he prayed, let it pass from me, but he said, uh, your will, O oh Lord, your will. And his message from suffering 
that was the consequences of full integrity and giving up himself. And until we resolve that meaning within our own limited scope and become ready to say yes and to obey, even if the results are not always happy at the moment. Some life events seem horribly cruel and unnecessary at the time, but sometimes we are privileged to gain just a glimmer that, in fact, all things actually did work together for good in Jesus Christ. Many times we must trust that this is true, but we ourselves may not even live long enough to see it fulfilled. But we trust after our time that there will be a fulfillment, that God's truth is going to carry through. So Paul contrasts concepts of power that the people in his age uh, had in dealing with power. And his concept of power was to follow what the Lord God told him to do, even if they killed him, which they did. So Jesus contrasts the ancient laws. You have heard it was said with, but I say unto you, and he's speaking to us as adult disciples. The commandments give us the first level of understanding, guidelines that prevent us from so much pain if we will only follow them. And Jesus did not negate these. He did not take away from them, but he moved from external behavioral boundaries to internal state and intentions where we might violate ourselves or somebody else if we don't pay attention to our own intentions. Jesus was ahead of his time. He pointed out, for example, if one has lusted, put one's own sensual arousal experience ahead of treating the other person as a whole person, then we've already committed adultery. We have our fantasies, we nurture our fantasies, which then lead to failure to respect other people's needs and boundaries. When we covet, we are already at risk of stealing, appropriating for, from another what belongs to them. When we're jealous, we're already desiring someone or something that does not belong to us. So when we hate, we already have the fruits of rage to contend with in ourselves and carry to its logical conclusion, murder is the result. When we swear in God's name, we are in essence attempting to compensate for our own uncertainty and weakness as though our own are not enough. So it's also true with wrong attitudes and thoughts that violate others, we cannot enter the kingdom. That's because the kingdom begins here and now, today, in this room. And if we continue to walk the path of his righteousness, it will continue with us past our lifetime, we begin to realize the kingdom of God or to create our own hell beginning with our secret and hidden mental life and then the logical conclusion after we die is that we are apart from God. And the kingdom of heaven is not something that's awarded after death. The word in Aramaic, kingdom, is a very interesting word. It encompasses an image of a resting point, a fluid, luminous enclosure 
and our devotedly holding on to it because we would be lacking grounding without it. In other words, we need to find and know our center, which rests in God's kingdom. It is in him that we are contained and held. It is with him a dependable anchor in our lives. So when we hold anger, rage, resentment, fear, pride, envy, jealousy, covetousness, we have already displaced ourselves from that center. We're all center and we're damaging God's intended channel of light that we are called to offer others. He was the light and so we are to be the light. Now, how does Jesus relate to all these mental storms that we all go through in our faith practice? We're told, if we remember, we need to reconcile with a brother or sister. Do that first and then come to the altar when we've released ourselves from those burdens that make us and other people miserable the emptiness and absence of heaven will be filled. We will know heaven here and now. So as we pray, what is it that I have seen? Swimming trout in mountain streams, scattered wildflowers, hillsides. What is it that ear has heard? Vivaldi laughing base. What is it that the heart has known? Glorious, intimate, unconditional love. These you have prepared for us, O oh Lord. O oh, sharpen our senses. Amen. And that's the gospel for today.